So I want to thank you all for being with me and listening to me this morning, even if it's out of utter obligation to a professional developer, because I appreciate any audience I can get. So, you know, sometimes I get desperate to hear my own voice. And um, I think by the end of this, you'll like the sound of my voice as well. Uh, so let me prime you, it won't, it won't all be comfortable. Uh, some of the things I, I might share with you might challenge you a little bit, and you know, who's up for challenge? Ah, uh, there we go, good, okay, good. Now that's my choir, so the other side, we're coming for you. No, um, but yeah, I, I, um, I'm really happy to, to be standing here. I know that, uh, that, uh, the attempt for us to eliminate the, you know, bigotry, the biases, the isms that exist in our society, you know, they're, they're really no laughing matter. These, these issues are tough and people are hurting and people are being affected by these issues. And we, say that again, we have a responsibility to do something about it. It's just... It just is what it is, right? We have to take a different approach to, to solving the matter, right? Because something is not working. Some things have changed, but a lot of things have remained absolutely the same, okay? Um, I, I, um, I grew up in the inner city, Dorchester, Roxbury, Mattapan, that's where I'm from, and to be standing here in Redden speaking to a room full of educators as a young person who was expelled twice high school senior year. <coughs> Talk about the guy you didn't want in your class. <laughs> Whew. My geometry teacher said, Mr. Cross, you are one D away from calling yourself a successful geometry student. There goes the bar, right? His, his ambition was, if I could just get you out of my class, right? Hey, we're good. But, you know, it set a standard and became a norm, and that led to a whole bunch of decisions and choices that I'm glad I've moved away from since. Because since being that young man who uh, got expelled twice his senior year, I have achieved my bachelor's, I have achieved my master's, I am also getting my second master's coming this fall, I will be starting this uh, master's program. So I've overcome the standard for what was expected of me at that time when I was uh, a young person coming up in the inner city. Uh, and so to be standing before a room full of educators is, is kind of crazy. Um, my my uh, disciplinarian, before he expelled me twice, he plopped my folder down full of pink slips. <laughs> Messed the cross. Finally! Like, he couldn't wait to rid himself of me. But, you know, I gave him reason. Uh, you know, I gave him a run for his money. Um, but, yeah, I, I want to share with you this morning what I believe will help us in this area that we're stuck in in our society. I don't believe that I'll be presenting some groundbreaking, some groundbreaking uh, research discovery. I do believe that what I'm proposing today certainly would not hurt anyone to try and implement it to their daily life. Now I've learned to measure some things by simply asking myself the question, what's the consequence of living my life this way? When I discover that my choice or my response to the, to the question or the way of living my life would not hurt myself or anyone else, then I'm okay with my belief system. I'm okay with moving forward from that point on and not letting anyone else's opinion interrupt me. My Google just jumped. Did I say okay? Um, but I'm okay if I said it right now. I'm, I'm cool with moving forward from there and accepting that this is okay because it's not hurting anyone and it's not hurting me. 
But I just want to ask you to move into that frame of mind today. Some of the stuff that, that I'm going to present, that I'm going to talk about or ask you to do, may not be what you are accustomed to. But you got to ask yourself, if I try this on, if I do it this way, if I approach life this way, would it hurt me or anybody else? Now, it might hurt you as you do the research within yourself to discover some things that are just not okay and you have to deal with them. But after that, I mean, it only going to make the world a better place. Okay? So please, I, I know that some, as you hear these things, your little inner debater turns right on, right? And you start to come up with your counter argument. I'm just gonna ask you to sign us the little debater. I know we love our own opinions. We love them, they sound so good to us. And when you win a good debate, you feel like you conquered the world. Ah, ripped you to shreds. Don't ever talk again, right? <laughs> I beat you. But we got to get past that. So I'm just going to ask you to silence the little debater and just be open to some change. I want to tell you a little bit about this. Check it out. So all my life, and I expect that all your life, you've been taught to be good. Right? Am I wrong? Anybody not taught to be good? Well, wait, because we're going to point you out. So, all my life I've been taught to be good, and of course I did not always listen, right? From my mother, to school teachers, aunts, uncles, custodians, coaches, and any adult in my life, they taught me to be good. And they taught me that being good can, uh, meant to, that I did certain things. Let me see if any of these things remind you of what being good was supposed to look like. Chill with your mouth closed. Anybody? That was be your good. You chew with your mouth closed, right? Uh, keep your elbows off the table when you're eating. <laughs> yeah, this will get you in trouble. So, mom, what am I supposed to eat like this? You'll be in trouble. <laughs> oh, you're a little smarty, huh? Okay. <laughs> Sit up straight, right? This is good. Look, she just adjusted. I just reminded her of the voice. Oh, no, I'm slouching. They were right about these things. That's why we all end up like this. It, Mama was right. Uh, say please and thank you. Right? This, this is all being good. Raise your hand. This is a good thing. I know kids in classrooms now who just raise their hand for the exercise. What's the answer? Oh, I was just raising my hand. It just felt good. I got a rotated cup that she was trying to work out. So. Get back to your lesson, teacher. Um, if you don't have anything nice to say, boom, look at us being good. We remember those rules. At Ian, they're teaching pause. Practice compassion, act responsibly, work towards success, show respect, all about teaching kids how to be good. Make terrific choices if you're at Killer. Right? Say bless you when someone sneezes. Do you remember anybody explicitly saying to you, say bless you when someone sneezes? Because I don't. Oh, one guy does. Well, you're the guy. <laughs> I asked my, my four-year-old says it to me. I sneeze, bless you. If she sneezes and I don't say it, Dad, you didn't say bless you. <laughs> I'm so sorry, young lady. God bless you. Right? But it happens in these things. We pick them up along the way and these are all signs of being good. You're in school, walk in silent lines at the elementary level, right? By high school, that's all out the window. You know, please make it to class on time. Please, maybe, okay, you know, four minutes late, right? But things change as people go along, right? Hold the door for the person behind you. Don't stare, wait your turn. Who's had trouble doing that? I'm an adult that can't wait my turn. If you are next to me on 93, get out of my way. Okay? Because I'm going to press it. I'm going to accelerate. You are too slow for me. Who loves traffic? See? <laughs> we got some things in common. Um, give me five if you're at Birch and, and respect other people's bubble. And the last one, this is the newest one. 
about, around being good. When I post something on social media, like it immediately. <laughs> That's the new one. That's the new sign that you are good. But I gotta ask you all a question. What has all this teaching of good done for us? And if you go anywhere, anywhere uh, on the earth, pretty much, you won't find yourself in too many places where these lessons aren't the norm, where these lessons are not what students or children are being taught, right? We're all teaching our kids to be good. Everyone is teaching their kids to be good. Yet with all these lessons being taught to us when we were young, accepted old habits. With all these lessons that we were taught when we were young and that we are still trying to teach our kids even now, we still have certain people groups existing under oppressive circumstances. How does that happen? How are we taught to be so good, yet oppressed people groups still happen. How does that work? I'm gonna tell you something, this one hurts, right? But the slave master said, please and thank you. Yeah. The person who intends to do harm to large groups of people was taught to say please and thank you. A person who comes into our school every day with a bully mentality, I'm going to beat those under me, I'm going to oppress those under me, I'm going to make people feel bad, adults and students included, were taught to be good. But something's wrong with our development and in, in good because it's not, it's not eliminating something in our society that is causing us to have hateful tendencies against people who do not fit our norm. So I think we have to go a bit deeper if we're really gonna undo the injustices that exist in our society. So today I'm gonna ask you to flip the switch and make a choice. Stop being good. This good ain't working. I know, it's scary. But I'm gonna ask you to be bad. your attention. We're listening because the next thing you say come out of your mouth. <laughs> I've been taught to be good my whole life. Now you're talking about my mother and I don't like people talking about my mother. But I want to ask you to be good. I want to ask you to be bad rather. Bad is an acronym for a way in which I believe that we can change the norms in our society. The B we need to build authentic relationships. If we begin to build authentic relationships, the first thing we have to do is know ourselves. We've got to take a nice examination of like, who are we? What does it mean to be me? And not the things that I've gained control of, but the things that were planted in me that I don't even know about. You know that a lot of water can be wasted with a small drip in your faucet. I know a lot of you have had a leaky faucet. You're like, I gotta get that fixed immediately. Cause that's gonna cost you a lot. Gallons of water from a tiny drip. Over the course of your life, before you become a conscious thinker, a whole bunch of drips are put into you about other people groups that you have no control over. You're socialized to think a certain way about other people groups and before you know it, it's a part of your makeup. And we gotta go underneath that to get to know the real us. What was put there without my intention? What was put there that I did not ask for? What is controlling the way that I approach people? We gotta begin to ask ourselves those tough questions. I had a professor that said, you cannot facilitate growth past yourself. So if we're gonna help each other grow, we first gotta do it ourselves. I had to do that work or else I would stand before you a black man who hates white people. You, you understand what the black American has been through in this 
country, right? Racism, middle passage, Jim Crow. Like, the atrocities committed against my race of people should have me standing here before you, not able to call this man not only a colleague but a friend, or well, this woman not only a colleague but a friend, to look around this room and say, I have good relationships with people who do not look like me. I would not be able to do that if I didn't know myself. I had, to do, I had to do the deep work too, to get to the place where I, I could do that. And I'm functioning these people, I know I could people. Right, makes sense? We gotta do the deep work, we gotta know ourselves to build those authentic relationships. We gotta be willing to go deep. Most of us always present ourselves only at the tip of the iceberg, where the whole us is Underneath there, that big, uh, we got to be willing to do the deep work to get to know the person that does not fit our norm. You're not like what I'm used to, so I got to get to know you because guess what? If I don't, here comes my drips. All the drips that I'm accustomed to about you, they become what I assume about you. And now our, our ability to build an authentic relationship becomes cut off because I just say, well, this is how I know you are because that's what everybody told me you were, right? It's hard to have a good assessment about people when you haven't had them in very intimate settings. Raise your hand if while you were younger, a person outside of your race came and sat at your, your table for dinner. But that's a whole bunch of people who never had the intimate interaction with people at their dinner table. That is huge because the way we get to know people is through intimate interactions. And the best way for me to do that is to do the deep work with you. Get do the deep work of understanding who you are. Like, who are you? Oh, well, we get to know you. I'm not gonna let my drift control how I think about you. And listen to my story. Don't create one for me. Listen to my story. Don't create one for me. If I'm walking down the street, and I mean, I'm not the smallest guy in the room, and you see me, I don't create the instant story. Here comes a bad guy. And I know most won't say that in the room about me because now you know me, you've seen me smile, you've seen me, you've laughed with me, you've gotten to know me, but if you see me and you, we, we did not know each other, what would come into play immediately? Oh, whoa, big guy, big fella, probably needs something, probably hungry, style, no food out, wants to get me, he's a criminal, get him. Like all those drips come into play immediately, we gotta interrupt that. We gotta build authentic relationships. The second thing we gotta do, if we're gonna be bad, we gotta avoid. Avoid any contribution to the isms. We all pay a, play a part in tearing down systems and norms in our society that, op that oppress certain people groups, and we have to avoid at all costs sowing any seeds into the soil of isms that, op that oppress groups, and we have Excuse me, we each have a part to play in that. We have to avoid that at all costs. We have to avoid microaggressions. These things feel so tiny, but remember that they feel so small and minute, but when a billion people are doing it at the same time, it's a lot of power, correct? A lot of power. So we have to strip microaggressions of their power by making an individual choice to avoid them at all costs. We have to avoid confirmation bias. You cannot have a little black student in your class who takes a pencil, or at this level, a high school student, who takes a pencil and you automatically go, see, this is what I was worried about. They're probably going to jail. They took a pencil. So I knew it. No, no. He he took a pencil. You walk up and down his car and you'll find pencils all over the ground. Pencils, pens, books, education, all over the ground. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, come on, don't do the confirmation bias thing that I told you were that. No, 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 no. Oh, you're a human who made a poor decision. God, there we go. That's the context I need to leave you in. 
every time we have an interaction, be it negative or positive, you're a human who made a specific kind of choice and I gotta limit you to that. Oh, that's it. Because every time I let my biases come into play, we continue to be in trouble as a human race. If our goal is equality, right? Be, avoid being a part of the silent majority. The truth of the matter is, I don't believe in any way, shape, or form that all people, that all white people are racist. I do not believe that, okay? Let me just be very clear. I do not believe that. I believe that our society has come a very long way, a very long way from what we once were, okay? But I believe that in order for it to continue to change, we need the silent majority to speak up. You know, when you see the situation and you wonder and you have the argument in your head, should I say something, should I do something, should I speak up, and you just drown it out. But you know what? The racist goes hard for it to make it seem like hate is the only thing that's, that's worth giving out to the world. They make the noise, they put it out there, they go on social media, they talk, they post on any, go on YouTube, watch any positive video about uh, biases and overcoming and cultural competency and you will see them laden with hateful speech. This is lie, this is socialism, this is this, this is that. You'll see all the negative commentary and they make it seem like they're the biggest people group in the world and it's just not true. So avoid being part of the silent majority and speak up. Give a voice to these things that need to be undone in our society. And lastly, and we're wrapping up here, we gotta diversify our thinking. Diversify our thinking. So our thoughts, I learned this a long time ago, our thoughts are living things that shape the world around us. If we take race, class, gender, and we put it into specific groups and form norms and biases and, and issues with those groups and we only take certain approaches to them, that's what we put out into the world. And our world begins to look like that and ongoing on and on and on. And the only way to interrupt that is for us to diversify our thinking. If we've been raised in one place where everybody looks like us, all the time, all we do is wash up that reminds of us, of us. That's all we do, then we've got, we're not gonna be very diversified in our approach to life. We're gonna have one way of doing things. And if we're gonna change the way that our world works, we have to diversify our thing. We have to let some color come into our filter. We have to let some differences come into our perspective so that we begin to shape the world to look a lot differently. We have to respect our humanness because that's who we are at the end of the day. White, black, Haitian, Spanish, tall, short, fat, small, little, thin, whatever your makeup is, we are human. And if we begin to respect our humanness in a way that allows us to shape the world for be equitable for everyone, so that we all feel like we belong, not you welcome to be into, we belong, because we're a part of the human race, then our world continually moves in a better direction. So let me recap. Let's be bad. Let's build authentic relationships. Avoid the things that set norms into place and cause destruction in humanity. Let's diversify our thinking. Let's change the world. Let's change the world together. Thank you for your time.